Okay, sir, we have come to Wellington, New Zealand. We're in front of one of my favorite places in the world, Weta Workshop. As you can see about the troll. We've went and found the trolls and we have five days to complete our assignment. Yes, uh, it's, that's not a lot of time at all to make this film, but we have done some preparation. So we've been on some phone calls with the team here mm -hmm. to lay out exactly what we're gonna do this week. A lot of moving parts gonna have to come together um, to make this film from the costumes, the props, the you know the practical effects. It's a king's ransom worth of stuff. What is on the agenda today? Well, the very first thing we're gonna have you do is get your arm cast, because okay. we have an effect in the film where your arm's being torn off. <laughs> so that's gonna be the first thing. When's the last time you had your arm, ca your arm cast? My, I cast my arm a couple times on the show, uh, and I had a life cast about seven or eight years ago, but uh, no, it's been a while. All right, I can't wait to see yeah. how this is gonna go. <laughs> let's jump right in. Okay, let's do it. And are you wearing the chain as well? I'll be wearing some of your Weta chain oh, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. here, yeah, yeah, but yeah. not on my not arm. Not on the arms. I actually yeah. can't bend my arms with chain mail. <laughs> <laughs> it's too close fitting. But you can see how we can, we can play around, probably remove, we could probably remove the elbow cop or leave it whatever we choose. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll, we've got quite a bit of flexibility here. And then so if you cast up to here, we'll have all the room so, yeah. we need to play. And if we just play. do something that's like not straight, we just do something like that's bent. Because mm -hmm. if we do end up like this and we're just doing this, then I can, can kind of shape your it arm so as if this is, as, as if we're doing this, but from yeah. this position. So it looks like you're standing like this, but your arm's coming out here and it gets yanked off or cut off. Or that's we great. can do the whole arm. So if we, if we get this, I think we're well covered. Basically, it's a 90 degree. I know, because Joel, Joel and I were talking about the blood rig, and we, in, in your script, there's kind of this whole <coughs> gag where it's like more blood, less blood. Yeah. And we were kind of thinking, well, it might be kind of cool if, because we were planning on using a keg and um, putting a tap on you. That's exactly what I would love, is there's a tap yeah, on me, it, and Richard's cool, like. Eh? Yeah, so you guys can muck around with it, and it can be. Yeah. We were originally thinking of syringes, but we'll never get this full on but also where thing. it's coming out like where we see it coming out i'd love there to be some like bits of tendon and like yeah. genuinely yeah, yeah, gross yeah, yeah, yeah. We, can, yeah. we can we can do something to <laughs> you guys won't have to shave my arm nah we'll just what i'll do is i'll just put some um some wax in amongst the hair we put there's a we use i don't know if you've had this done before but we're using a smooth on silicon mm -hmm. and there's a product they call hyperfolic which is like an oil you put in it and it releases really well off here huh. and then also there's this wax and the wax just helps a bit more lovely and so you're going right on my arm with silicon yep oh cool yep. i did not realize that yeah this is the with, with i mean obviously there's the old school alginate way of doing yeah. things which is cool for some things the benefit of the silicon is it costs a little bit more up front but you've essentially you actually got, get a mold you've got instead mold. of having to go through the two-step yeah, process. Yeah, and you can get a lot out of it. And in, in the old days, you know, we, I say old days, but if we took like a head cast, we'd take it in alginate, it, we'd reproduce it in plaster, we'd go in, we'd clean it all up, get it right, and then we'd take a master mold off of it. Yeah. Like, like, a, like a case mold in fiberglass and silicon. And there's a lot of expense and time associated to that. Whereas if these silicon products now are pretty much the life cast, as long as you get a good life cast, that's your mold. You and just, it'll last? Yeah, you can usually get, oh man, a, up to a dozen casts out of wow. it. Wow, so, wow, that's know. amazing. And I've done ones where I've um, taken a few plasters and then I'll take a fiberglass out of it. And eventually, obviously, it, it's, sure, it's, sure. Pretty, it's pretty shot, but you get enough to get through the job. And Do you have any issues with shrinkage? I mean, it, nah, I assume this, it kicks pretty fast. The silicon barely shrinks. It's and, 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 and per, you, I don't think you'd be able to perceive shrinkage in it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas obviously alginate, I mean, it shrinks. Yeah, pretty it's much the time rapidly. Ticking. Yeah, I only use alginate if it's a real fast thing. We did some hand casts a while ago that we had to do like four of them in 20 minutes. So then you use alginate because this yeah, takes about yeah. an hour. You just you can't do that. But I often find with the wax though is you can you know it, it can actually hurt putting it on because <laughs> <laughs> the wax wants to stick to the hair. I cast my arm for Mythbusters at one point. I just did a box, filled it with plaster, stuck my hand halfway oh, I, in, yeah. and then arranged everything so I could mix the next batch of plaster with my left with hand and pour it in over the top. It worked out okay. That was my first hand cast I did like that. I did it in plaster. And I did a two part I did a two part mold, but I put my hand in there and I just filled plaster around exactly, halfway yeah. and went, yeah, and then I released it and I poured the other half. But it was the same thing. I finished it and then I'm like, oh, Man, I got one hand, and how am I going to get my hand out of this? And I'm like this huge block of plaster. It was, it was quite comical. <laughs> my sister was teaching an art class where a kid wanted to cast their hand, and she wasn't watching them. And they filled a coffee can 
full of plaster and stuck their hand oh, in it. No. Yeah, it took a while to get them back yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it's not good. I mean, it's <laughs> so damn hot too. Yeah, yeah. Plaster just cooks. Yeah. I mean, so I'll, I'll, I'll go through what we're doing quickly. I mean, it's we put on one layer of the silicon, which is just our surface layer, mm -hmm. and it has the hyperfolic in it, which is this oil that helps release off the hair. It's a, a, a little greasy, which is why we only put it in the first layer. Okay. And we'll put that on pretty thin, and Kim and I will just brush it on, we'll cover it all. And then once that sort of gels up, which, you know, it, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes, depending mm -hmm. on what the temperature's doing, we'll make up another layer with a fixo layer. So we put a fixotropic agent in it, make it nice and thick, and then we build it up. Once that's gone off, um, you know, another 15, 20 minutes, then we'll take some plaster bandage. You know, so the first layer is like a detail layer? It's the detail layer. Right, yep. okay. You can actually get pretty good detail with the fixo layer, but you tend to get, um, you know, missing bits and, you know, right, right. You know, so it's, it's better to put a detail layer in. And then we have another silicon, which is green, which is same, same smooth on product. It's just um, a lot faster. Mm -hmm. So if we have thin spots, we quickly mix some of that up. Fill oh, any okay. thin spots. Sometimes you get thin spots around fingers and stuff. And then we put the plaster bandage on, wait for that to go off. Once that's gone off, we whip you out of there. And usually what I do is just put a bit of water, cold water in there. And it helps push and it just, away. Yeah, it just helps sort of pu push it off. And then it's yeah. just a matter of slow, and it's silicon so you can move, and you just slowly work your hand out of it, and eventually you'll feel it pop, and we just slide you on out. I love that feeling. Yeah, it's a good feeling. <laughs> it's like, especially if it's like, oh, it's been like 20 minutes. <laughs> Let's get them out. <laughs> So we'll just go for it if that's Yeah, cool. let's do it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Excellent. Cast my arm. Oh, funky. Let's stay away from the armpit. The color, it's, it's, now I feel like the human version of the great British Bake Off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're literally icing you. <laughs> so this first layer is the detail layer. Yeah, the silicons have made a massive difference to what everybody does. Yeah. Even, even well, we, we do it, and, any, and everybody does, but we do a lot of stuff where, you know, you might have an actor. Uh, it's easier to life cast an, an actor or a performer where they are rather than, you know, have to fly them out or you right. go to them. Oh, you can travel with the materials, yeah. And it's just so much easier now with silicon because you can just have whoever's doing it for you or if we're doing it for someone else, they can just send us the mold or we send the mold right. rather right. than having to send fragile, heavy plaster casts. Getting ready to join the Blue Man Group. <laughs> you'll know too, you'll feel when it's starting to. It's, to I can feel it's off. getting just a tad thicker. Yeah, you, you definitely feel it. And of course, it goes off a lot quicker on you than it does on the bowl oh, because, cool. because of the body temperature. But we're sort of, we're, we're well covered, so you can sort of pick All a right. position anytime you want. Does yeah, that work for you? Stuff. That bend, do you think? Yeah, think you're in the that's perfect. Yeah, that's cool. great. With the silicons like this, it's like a lot of other materials you would have worked with. There's that point where if you keep working with it, you'll just you'll drag start. it off. Right, <laughs> so you, right. Sort of, you have to know when to stop. And that's kind of it until it, until it properly gels up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're prob we're pr probably only talking a few minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is even more like good. being iced. Now this one smells a little different. It's, it's, the, the, it's the fixer. Yeah. yeah. It's got an interesting yeah, smell. It does. You only put a tiny amount in, but you know it's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the thixotropic agent just allows it to sit a little bit uh, more dimensionally thick and yep. hold itself like yep. a like a heavy exactly. frosting. Exactly, it just holds itself. Yeah, you can, if you put enough in, you can sort of go on a vertical surface quite easily. Wow. It's getting tiring to hold my arm up. It does get yeah. heavy. Yeah. Yeah, at any point if you need us to um, give you a hand. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Once a plaster bandage comes yeah, on, we can I'll, hold, we hold I'll your brace your arm because it does get that heavy. Yeah, we had a, we've had a lot of stuff like that where you kind of, ah, you have to have it ready by here, we're going to have to cast it then, the mould's got to be ready by here, when are we going to do that bit? And yeah, working backwards from yeah, the... Always working backwards. Well, and casting and mould making itself is always thinking upside down and backwards. It's funny, yeah, because a lot of people really grasp it straight away. Like some people can, can just, they just get it. Other people don't seem to ever be able to get it. That whole thinking in reverse and backwards and upside down. I understand it intellectually. I will tell you every time I try and cast in mold, I forget or miss something important. So like I screw up every casting in some key way. <laughs> it's like I can never quite get that full intuition. 
I was blown away by the uh, dif the seasonal differences in your castings for the dwarves for Hobbit. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff we had to do on that. Like just, we were lucky on that job that the, there wasn't too much variation in the color. <coughs> uh, there was all sorts, sort of complexities around um, because they were using the red cameras and having to punch everything up. There was a lot of sort of complexity around that. But for the most part, we were at least able to lock off on a fairly generic color. Oh, okay. But um, not for the leads, but mainly for the, I guess you'd call them sub leads. But um, yeah, like the densities and all that were just constantly changing because depending on what temperatures are doing and it's, yeah, it can, That's be, amazing. It can be a nightmare. On Ghost in the Shell, it was even more extensive we didn't have so many seasonal issues, but every single person had their own color, their own density, just- Really? Yeah, and you might, some, someone might only be wearing something that big, but it's perfectly color matched to them, and it's a different density from this one. Wow. So, you know, you're having to mix this tiny little batch of silicon to run a prosthetic. And the density is always about how it moves on yeah. camera? Yeah, how it moves is most, mostly what it's about. Right. Um, some things, obviously, you want to restrict a person's movement. Other things, you definitely don't want to. And, mm -hmm. you know, and if you get really into it, some multi-piece makeups, you have to break those down too. So the forehead will be a different density to, say, the cheeks. And really? Like yeah. It's... So this is just standard plaster cast yeah, bandage. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all it is. Yeah. One of my favorite materials. Oh, it's great. It's <laughs> fantastic. Because you can see when we bend here, that little yeah. wrinkle. Oh, yeah. yeah so and so what we're going to do is this obviously a two-part operation. Mm -hmm. So we'll be sort of splitting around this Oh, line. you will? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do probably do this side first, I guess, because it's the more difficult side. Yeah. Um, obviously, plaster bandage, the, where, where the only place it wants to be is on the floor. Right. So you're, you're fighting to keep it up on the hand. I said often say that to a lot of people. If you think about all materials like that we use like that, that the only place they want to be is lying on the floor. Yeah. If you think about it like that, it sort of starts to make a lot of sense. All yeah. molds want to leak, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It feels so cool being locked in, like locked in resin, locked in. Uh... It's good that you don't mind it. Some people don't like it. <laughs> I am complete. I am uh, free of any claustrophobic tendencies. And so because we're going all the way up the arm, we can really choose where we, where we, we like this yeah, slice. We can, yeah, we can have a bit of fun with it and if we can dress the armor in such a way that we can make it work. It also means we don't have to necessarily sculpt the break, we can build it up. Yeah, we'll just build it. Right, yeah. right. Definitely. It's getting heavy now. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. The trick is they have to cast the plaster band, put the plaster bandage on in two parts so that you can get my arm back out. If they went all the way around, that would just be my new arm. Try and see what I'm doing, which is always the fun part. Yeah, sometimes, like we did a uh, we did an Indian film a few years ago, and we had to do quite an extensive body cast on the actor. Mm -hmm. And we ended up having we were building rigs on the fly as we were going, you know, kind of like speed rail type material, and we're just building rigs to support him everywhere because he, right. he was leaned over and he was getting really tired. So we ended up building quite a complex sort of little scaffolded type rig just to support his head. Yeah. It looks like you guys are getting almost exactly the right amount of, like you cut, do you, do you have a specific well, no, amount no, of plaster was, bandage you cut? That was good luck. <laughs> oh good. I was <laughs> like, these guys are like, good. Wow. Man, I would have said that it was. <laughs> right. uh, I got 800 grams like of bandages. Four, four roll size, you know. <laughs> Just some alignment marks. Yeah. It's always really interesting too when we get a life cast from overseas. From a different company, because yeah. because to see everybody's different, yeah, see what they're doing, yeah. and we're, we're quite um, we're ge very geographically isolated, yeah. So, you know, someone will come up, do something, and you'll be like, oh wow, that's actually really really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll give that a crack, and there's not a lot of shared techniques down here because you know you're just not exposed to it. Yeah, so yeah. Unless you're actually looking for it, it's it's often not there. A lot of what we do, we sort of you know. You sort of had to come up with yourself and hope that you're doing it right. right, right. <laughs> it's just, it's always going to be a little bit difficult because we've got a, um, an, an elbow bend. Yeah, but as long as we get from oh, the there you go. All right, so that's that one. Wow. Come straight off. Put some water in there. Should I start wiggling my fingers? Yeah, you should definitely just start moving your hands around and. Oh, that's okay. I'm uh, 
I knew what I was signing up for. We'll do our best just to try and get it off in one part. Right. Because we've got a bend in it, if we do have an issue, we might just have to cut the inside. I feel optimistic we'll be able to do this. Usually they come off. You hear that? <laughs> oh. I mean, feel obviously feel free to pull on it yourself yeah. too. I mean, it's, I'll just put a bit of weight <laughs> on it. This is so funky. It feels funny when it goes to it. Yeah, it's like a. We're almost there. Yeah, so it's just an extraction point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Woo! Giving birth. It is literally like that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, so I mean, that's, I mean that, obviously that's the beauty of this silicon product is that you get really good core detail and um, it's good and strong. Amazing. Yeah. I can't believe how fast you guys did that. That's and the weakest part of the whole process is actually the jackets. Yeah. So what a lot of, a lot of shops will do if they're going to, if this is going to be a long running thing, right. they'll take a cast out and when the cast is still in it, like a plaster or urethane, they'll actually re-jacket it. So they'll make a right, like right, glass right. jacket or epoxy jacket and then they can get a lot more out of the mold because the plaster is always the thing that gives up. Simple as that. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, Thank good. you very much. Thanks, Adam. Awesome. And does it look like it's uh, the oh, jacket's all? Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll clean it up and what I do is I'll seat it properly and then I usually just add a little bead of silicon around the top which holds this onto the jacket. So it just makes it its own integral piece. So it doesn't yeah. collapse in. Yeah. Right, right, right. And then we'll just dry it out and then tomorrow we'll, we'll blow a cast out of it and Beautiful. What we got. And, All right. Yeah. Thanks cool. very much, guys. Cool. Easy. Awesome. awesome. Cool. All right. Cheers. I love this opening. I love the idea of him like backing into frame. You don't know what he's dealing so with. So you figure sort of like an establishing shot and then this. Totally. Mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, it's great. It's unexpected. We hear it scream. Um, so here, where I'm napping under the tree, um, there's a shot from Excalibur. There's a thing from Excalibur that I want to try and replicate here, which is that as I get up, I'd be, I'd be, you know, sitting there sort of prone with my helmet off, mm -hmm. and I hear the cry and you know the whatever the waking up is, and look around, and then reach behind me to pull a sword out, and this is Lancelot does this in Excalibur. The uh, uh, Parsifal comes towards him, and Lancelot seems to be sleeping, but when Parsifal gets close, he's like. Whoo -ting! You know, and just so to me, I just I want to do that. Right. There's an awareness that you, you have of exactly. sound. And yeah, it's, I it's wake up. I know motion. exactly where my weapon is, and it's right there. It's the medieval version of the gun under the pillow. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, um, have we decided whether it'll be wearing the helmet throughout or at all? I don't think so. So okay. it'll just be literally next to you while you're napping. Yeah. I don't think it makes sense for us to, I mean, it's not like I put it on and it only restricts my movement and looks weirder, right? So I think it makes, it, it, it creates more problems than it solves. Soldier is mangled. Do we know what we're going to do for the mangling? Uh, they said we may have an um, existing body. Um, I'm not exactly sure. So Jason was preparing for like cuts and yes, gashes, right? yes, gashes. It won't oh, be okay. it won't be dismembered. But um, the, you'll the creature in the yes. Okay. We're so we won't see the so we won't see the mangling. We'll see the aftermath. We, we could probably happens? have you walk up right as he poof, poof, falls down to the ground and then okay. the creature steps in the frame. And that's something that because we'll be making the light leather armor here mm -hmm. that we can cater that so that it will showcase how, how the soldier wears that to best show some damage on him. Oh, okay, right. So we may be dressing that like on set when we're doing it as well, or create two breastplates, one post damage. Yeah, that might be we possible We should check too. with Jason, yeah. About yeah. What, yeah. Or maybe they already have one that we can use as the hero and the mm -hmm. one that will, wet mold will be a, a, the one we can start to damage. Right. Mm. Okay, so clearly I've already drawn the sword before there um, and this is this this whole part is the fight choreography yes yes just in one sentence but yeah on Thursday um, if because we'll be talking to Shane who's a performer for the creature mm -hmm. uh, do we want to film as much fight as possible and and cut to something that feels good or did you have in your head a duration of, of fight I think it's, I mean, yeah, it's a good question. I'm, I think we're just going to have to choreograph a really long fight. 
I don't know if we want to choreograph a really long flight fight. I mean, like twenty or thirty seconds. Yeah. Okay. At the most. But something that would be, like you said, either use his hole or just pare down mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. that has beats to it, right? So there's that first getting to know each other parry. Right. There's, um, you know, one seeming to have the advantage. There's another seeming to have the advantage. This is all stuff. I mean, I, and I could leave this to the fight choreographers to. Yeah. There's to good. work out the the dance. Yeah, and he's going to know the suit really well, so... Yeah, he'll know if, what he can do. If we yes. find out that there's not too much that can happen... Well, there's like something there's... that he can do that looks really good. So right, wanna, yeah. Then... Right, A so... A lot of posturing. And... Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think it should show that we're both dangerous, mm -hmm. and then I try something that doesn't... That, that, you know, might be overly fancy, and I suffer immediately, and the arm gets ripped off. The arm is yeah, ripped off by him. Is that was yeah. that the idea? Was, or was he going to claw it off? Or what was the There was my hand movement restrictions, right? Yes. Uh, it was going to be... Um, so now that we've seen the creature, the fingers are extensions. Mm -hmm. And it's more clawing motions. Then I don't know if we can do a, a full grip. Now, it's something we can ask as we check the suit. Right. To see if that can be staged. Like so, the arm, you know, for, for close-up. Yeah. The, the creature fingers wrapped around the arm just for that shot. Well, or, or, look, we can ask them to help us solve this problem because they know this so much better than us. So to me, it's like if we say, I'm holding the sword in my right hand, we have a casting in my left hand, we want to separate my, whatever it takes. It could be the smacks, like, he just, mm, like this, yep. and the arm goes flying, and we get a shot of it flying through the air and landing or something like that. And we um, should figure that out before Jason starts making your... Jason's going to need to know yes. how the best to make yeah, that, exactly. that wound. Yeah, exactly. So that's right. We've got to, the choreography has to inform how we do the one-off of whatever the bloody stump looks like. Yeah. Death of the creature, I think, is a cool shot. Right. You know, yeah. creature and falling, blood. Adam walking over to the creature, feeling of satisfaction. So, blood still coming out of your, your arm. Maybe. So here's the thing that I really... I, I like the fact that you, that you wrote this uh, as... It ends with watching everyone reset for the second. Yeah, the, the retake, yeah. Actually, maybe that's the thing, is that it's the let's go again is our... So th this this just... So, again, as I originally conceived it, and I'm totally open to, to anything here, was that the moment my arm was cut off and the horror that happened to the audience of like seeing mm. the blood spurting, that we get a bigger laugh because we cut, we hear cut, and now it's me and Peter and Richard discussing how much blood is coming out of my arm. So we chase the horror of this disgusting thing with a laugh. So let's say you guys do fight. Yeah. We don't do the arm thing yet. Right. You guys do a fight, you lose your sword, you get the dagger, you take him out, but like in his final last last you know we uh, move the blow. arm removal to, he, at yeah, the end he of the grabs your arm and, th and throws it off as he's dying so he falls down spraying blood dead and you look down your arm's gone now you're spraying blood that's blood. funny then cut <laughs> that's really funny I mean, we could do that and that would, that would limit the problem and then, with the robot and, and it's, right it limits the problem with the robot we get to peter and then we get to let's go and we've covered everything the next slash the arm off then the 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 the, the i like that I think that works better. And so would that work on its own as, because we're our idea with this was to have this be its own short film and then be larger. No, I think this is the film. Everything. This is the, the, the meta is the film that okay. we're releasing. Cool. Okay. So, so we want, the, the key here is that the first time the arm is pulled off and there's blood, you want the, you want the pullback to be very close to that. Almost, yeah. Almost immediately, right? I mean, right. The blood it's like, going. we want it to look awful. And be like, what the fuck? So you could and do like the scream, blood, and then stop. Yeah. Like, is this too much? And then yeah, exactly. Cut. All right, hold on. And then back right. up, and you see everybody. Exactly. Okay. Well, you could do you could do one of these. Like, oh no no no. If it's if you slashed it. Yeah. With this dagger, right? Yeah. It's it's uh, so you slash it. It falls to its knees. It's spraying blood. You get up and just do one of these. Mm -hmm. Oh right. And then if you grab your arm and poof. Right, that's great. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. that's really yep. good. In this way, it would kind of be, you know, like mm -hmm. your, your cockiness got so you I, lose the sword. I, yeah, I put my hand on it, and I'm holding the yes. dagger, and yep. it yep. tear, there we go. and I'm stand. So then the next thing is, I stand up into frame, yeah. and we see the the, the cut, stump. 
end with bone and blood sticking out of it. And that's when I'm like, I'm so right. I'm staring at it and I'm like, is this too much blood? And that's when we break. Well, I think you're staring at it. It is dripping, and you, and then you see you spraying. Well, your, whatever, your, we'll figure that out on yeah. set. Whatever is funniest. Yeah. Either it's going to be dribbling or looking like syrup or spraying like a Tarantino film. I think you run through that cycle, which then prompts you to say, is this too much? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, whatever is funniest is what will work that out. But I think that progression works really well. Did one of us write it down? Um, yeah. And I could, like, I could add this all in tonight. Okay. And make a new version. Um, and then, again, this dialogue exactly, mm -hmm. and this exactly. Yep, yeah. and this montage will... And this might be shot at the very beginning, as yeah. you guys are preparing. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. We're getting this for real as we're doing this. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like we, you know, it's like you fade to black over the sound of a production crew. Okay, yeah, we're almost back to one. Mm -hmm. uh, we can get two more of these before lunch. And you're just hearing that sound of the chatter like the of the 80s, crew going. Getting people going. And, you know, it's like the first thing is thanks to Weta. And, yep. Uh, yep. That's great. That makes me feel really good. That's a really good problem to solve. So let me type this up tonight. Maybe we'll look at it again tomorrow and just read it through again. Mm -hmm. and see if we got something. You guys want to um, take a look at the creature? Yes. yes. Howdy. Jason, how's it going? Good, good seeing you. All right, what do we? Oh, this is this is this is our foam rubber monster suit that we're gonna. Wow. Have. Can I perform. approach and touch the monster? Absolutely. Oh, we're still just man. working through doing some patching on it. The suit's been used a couple of times, oh. so it needs a little bit of patching. But I never, I'm unceasingly surprised by how lightweight foam oh, latex yeah. really is. Yeah, it really is, and this thing's reasonably thick too. Yeah. But it doesn't look like it's too awful for the actor to wear. No, it's not too bad. I mean, obviously, you get pretty hot in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, as Shane, when you meet Shane, he'll attest to that. He's, he's been in a few things. And he's a, a monster suit veteran? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was General Altman in the Narnia films. Oh, okay. It's just, you know, massive big hair yeah. suit. So he, he's, he and is it up. lined on the inside with fabric? It's lined with fabric. Yeah. yeah. It's just basically like this, like a micro spandexy thing. God, it's gorgeous. The paintwork is so cool. Is this like a neon orange? Yeah, it's um for, for what we originally made it for. It had to glow under blue light. Oh, okay. So and you can see where the paint's damaged. That'll need to be touched up. You can sort of see the mm -hmm. the base under there. So yeah, for the most part, you don't see it. It's it's only tiny amounts of speculation in there. But when you hit it with blue light, it just it pings. And this this. Am I right? This didn't start out as a singular sculpt. This was more like you brought pieces together yeah, this to... this is fabricated, yeah. So there's a chest from one character, the back's from another, the arms are from another character, the, 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 the hands are from yet another thing we've done. <laughs> so he wears finger extensions in there. Oh, that, to, that can bend with his yeah. fingers a bit? His real fingers end probably about there. Oh, somewhere. wow! Yeah. His thumb ends about there. His, his thumb is not actually technically even in, really in the thumb of the creature. It ends about there. God, it's gorgeous. And it, it's it's all made just to be lightweight and safe because it was made for audience interaction. So right, you know, nothing, right, right. Nothing's sharp. Nothing can get caught on anyone. Right. You as often these can be resin. Yeah. If, we, if you if you're doing something specifically for a film, then a lot of this stuff would be a lot more rigid, so you don't get a wobble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because he was interacting with an audience. And you know, there's lots of people crowding around him. We didn't want anything that could potentially hurt anyone, so everything's soft on it. He's absolutely. Oh, can we turn him around? Can we spin him? Yeah. yeah. And he's just he's just all horns. <laughs> oh, God, that's and lovely. That's all, zipper up the back, and that's all just sort of hidden in there. That gets glued down on the day just to hide it. Oh, nice. Okay. It just makes it nice and easy. Um, and what about his face? Do we um, have a that's what we're going to run today. Okay. So that's that's the mold of his face, which is a very much a, um, an old school ultra cal mold. Oh, so we're running the, the foam today. Yeah, we're running. Oh, awesome! Yeah. I, this is. Do you guys call it Shram? No. We used to call it Shram. Really? Yeah. It was a, that was a specific brand name, I guess. Oh, okay. Of the, you yep. know, seven yep. to ten part. Yep. yep. No, that makes sense. Yeah, we we use like a it's a five part system that Berman supply now that Gil Moscow came up with in the eighties. So it's a five-part system. So it's five different five pieces different that each adjust different aspects yep. of the foam's yep. uh, uh, elasticity, yep. its stretchability, its all, durability. All of that. <laughs> okay, and 
do you have to still, because it's been a long time since I've run foam, do you guys still have to adjust those ratios based on yep. the temperature and yep. humidity? Yeah, we like on the wall there, we've got a temperature and humidity gauge. Normally, if it's, if it's good run conditions, we'd be around 20 degrees um, Celsius and, you know, hopefully around 50 to 60 percent humidity. And at the moment, the humidity is great. It's 55, but the temperature's yeah. quite high. Like if I was if I was picking and choosing, I would probably, you know, I'd, I'd run in the afternoon or, or late in the day and run in the morning yeah. to avoid the heat of the middle of the day. But it's, it's, you know, it's manageable at this temperature, but once the temps get too high, it gets a bit, a bit random. The gelling agent, you can only adjust down so much before there's actually just not enough of it in there to do its job. Yeah. Um, and one thing you find with foam, if the temperature is quite high or the, or the humidity is very high, you, you, it's really difficult. You've got to put the gelling agent in so slow because if you put it in too fast, it'll coagulate as it's going in and you'll get these sort of stringy lumpy bits all through the foam. This, so. this is mold making as baking, right? It's like the souffle that could crash. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah. I remember being told by the guy who I first ran tram with or ran foam with that, he had a notebook of every pour he'd ever done with the ratios and the temperature and humidity. That's yeah, I do the same thing. I Amazing. Ninety percent of the time, I, I'm running something. We've got stacks of foam runs, which can be quite interesting sometimes because you go back and you're going back twenty years, and you're like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> this is obviously our performer's face. That's yes? our performer's face, yeah. and that's a that's a reused core or, mm -hmm. or positive. That's that dates back to the Hobbit. This is made of an epoxy system. This job was a quick turnaround, so we just made your classic sort of old school ultra curl mold. Sculpted right onto this, or yeah, casting of this. Sculpted yeah. on this core, <clears throat> molded straight on there. The great thing about a product like this is you can go from a sculpture to running the foam if need be in the same day. Um, in the case of this one, we molded it and we baked it out overnight to get some of the moisture out and ran it the next day. And it's a ceramic plaster, like uh, a yeah, it's ultra hard? Yeah, ultra cal has ultra been, cal, yeah. it's been used for years. Um, the, over the years, the actual quality of the products dropped quite substantially. Really? I guess maybe because the actual commercial applications for it are disappearing, so there's not so much demand for it. So, you know, used to be able to run ultra, even on Lord of the Rings, you know, we could get dozens and dozens of runs out of an ultra cal mold, whereas now, it's a lot more fragile and chalky. So Fascinating. You can get maybe a dozen runs. So if we know we've got a low yield sort of thing, we, you know, we'll, we'll make an ultra-cal mold. Yeah. If it's something that we know we need a lot of, we'll make it out of an epoxy system like this. Got it. Which is infinite. You could throw the thing across the room. Oh, and it's gray. super light. It's very it's reasonable. Light. Yeah. It bakes really well. Okay, so where do we start? It's a five, five component. Wow, it can be more than five by the time you add tint and extras but it's a, it's a basic five parter so we're running yeah and sometimes i'm a bit bucket but as we talked about earlier you keep a record of every single pour we, we do the same thing you want me to enter that in 414 oh, I've, I've done all this but ah, 400. oh okay. yeah i kind of <laughs> i'm a bucket chemist <laughs> give or take give or take and each one of these agents does different thing in terms of how the latex cures the size of bubbles that it produces yep. how it moves yep. i mean the foaming agent obviously is exactly that it's mm -hmm. like this really it's a, it's a soap essentially and it, it's what causes it to you know foam up the curing agents what's the smell is it's just loaded full of sulfur right and then my limited understanding of the actual chemistry but the gelling agent which is a, a, a mild sort of acid it's it breaks down the actual the the layer of that the foam's created around the air bubble and once that layer is gone that's when the foam actually gels so i mean most of these the, the foaming agent i tend to control the density with the base so if i want a denser foam i'll just use more base okay i see um rather than modifying the actual foaming agent too much and there's a bunch of different stabilizers now that berman sell just to um you know, just helps stabilize the foam a little bit. And this one, the flow increaser, it just keeps it a little bit more liquid. It's essentially like thinning the base. And we call that an extra, but I pretty much put it in everything now. This just gives us a color that's, you know, slightly off white. Oh, okay. It's just an acrylic, acrylic tint. That also, we just get from Berman's. It just gives you something better for painting on top of. Yeah, it's like, it's just, yeah, the white, if it tears, it's just here I am, I'm white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something other than white, it's, it's, it's a bit better. And then from there I'd choose a timer. 
Um, and I, these are fairly arbitrary times, like three minutes for our main whip, nine mm -hmm. minutes for our refine. But I know how high I'm going to whip the foam. So once the foam actually gets up to that height, I You're might just turn it cut down. It. I see. Um, it's very close to my mixer at home, only three times the size. Yeah, and they get bigger than this, or like they get bigger than that. Too. Yeah. Oh, that smell, that ammonia. Oh, it's crazy, yeah. Normally with the bigger bowls, this bowl is actually for an eight, I use it for an 800 batch. So that would be 800 grams of base. Right. And I know with 800 grams of batch whipped right to the lip, I right. get a really nice density. This one here is set up at around 1900 grams, right to the lip, you get a really beautiful density. We don't need that much foam, so we're running a 400, which if I took it, if I could even get it all the way to the edge, it would be so light and fluffy, I wouldn't be able to do anything with it. Oh, wow. Like, like at the moment at 400, which will be about here somewhere, I'll be able to pour it into the syringe still. Mm -hmm. at, if I took it to the top. Oh, would, it's it, just, it, it would be like a meringue. Be, yep. I yeah, see. You can't right. do anything with it. And the foam <clears> itself <throat> will be so soft. I sort of know that I'm at about one, 150. So once it comes up a little bit, I know that I've got the right volume, which is pretty much timing in with three minutes. And then now we turn it down for nine minutes. And oh, this is just okay. a refine, and it just slowly um, mixes out the air bubbles. It makes them, it makes them tinier and tinier. Yeah. No, normally I would refine it for about 12 minutes, but it's so hot today right. that if I go too long, uh, it's, I'm gonna get um, gel shock in my phone which is when you get the little lumps. Oh. So as soon as I put, you put the gelling agent in real, as, you know, as slowly as you can. Right. But if you, go, if you go too quick and if too much ammonia is beaten out of there, it just forms little coagulated lumps. Because that's essentially what it is, it's coagulating the whole mass. Right. But you want a, a time frame, you know, you want about 10, 15 minutes to get it in the mold and then for it to gel it. Right. Um, or coagulate it. This part, is yeah. actually from a mold right um and the horns are from different molds and the rest of it's just again it's a construct like the suit we don't have right. a mold of this specifically so the horns have just been glued on oh. and then we've gone in and just quickly foam patched around it some people oh, call cool. it scumbling um, scumbling yeah i don't know where it came from but i call <laughs> i call it patch but i've heard it referred to as scumbling and then um yeah you just go in and you when the foam's in the gelled state you can texture it. Right, I can see there's lines with yep. just little dental tools yep. probably getting yep. a, adding to that skin texture and matching it to this. Yeah, just match it as much as we can. And you get one go at it. It's not like once the line's there, the line is there. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it's basically- so funny how totally, they're like so soft. And like I said, if we mixed it for a little bit longer, refined it for longer, we'd probably get rid of most of that. Those lumps, we see those occasional lumps we see, yep. that's what I was talking about. That's actually um, where the gelling agent is coagulated. Ah, I the, see. The foam already. And that's just usually a telltale sign of um, when, when your temp's a bit high and the base is a bit old. And, and then all we do from here, this makeup's got, um, it's got quite a few sort of undercut areas. So I just put a little bit of foam in there and then I just make sure I push it into those spots. Ah, okay. I don't normally like to disturb the surface too much. Yeah. But, but it is quite deep in there. Do you prep this with anything too? It, it just has a light release in it, which is... Um, like a spray? Again, again, they mark it. Yeah. It's actually a release we use for all of our silicon prosthetics too, as a, as a base. When I was doing this, it was with um, stop motion animation puppets. So we oh, were yeah, yeah. floating armatures inside of stone molds and then it's running foam fun into stuff. it. Terrifying. Well, that's the thing, once, if, if it doesn't work, you lose everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then what I do with this makeup, because the mold has not got a foot on it, mm -hmm. I just put it on this little rack here. Ah, which I, I often find easier than actually um, trying to make a, a mold that's got a platform on it. Because um, if you make your molds too thick, they don't bake very well. Oh. So sometimes just the addition. So the uniform of, thickness of the, uh, of the shell yeah, is important. Quite, quite important, especially if the mold's going to get run a lot. It's so much like baking. It really is. Like a lot of people sort of 
There's one of the old island model makers apparently ended up making a very good living being a high-end cake decorator to the stars. Really? Yeah. It makes complete sense, right? It does, it does. The same type of attention to detail and obsessive tendencies. Well, Kim, who's, you know, who you've met, she runs all our silicon. Her, her training, her background is chefing. So There's very, very similar disciplines. Yeah. And then from here, it's just, we just really? carefully put that in. And it's, wow. You get quite a bit of hydraulic pressure. And then once you sort of get it situated, I'll throw the strap under it. I usually use a block of wood just to, you know, mm -hmm. just help hold it down and push it. Pressure. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're really working it using the strap to yeah, just, guide it down yeah, and. Just, because if you, especially being ultra, an ultra cal mold, if you if you push it down too hard, you'll break something. Mm. And then I just use a wedge, and the wedge just creates a little bit of extra tension on the strap. And then that's it. That's and we, it. And we just wait for it to gel now. How long will that take? Um, if I've uh, got everything right, about ten minutes. <laughs> Two minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Oh, okay. You can see on my skin because yeah. of my body temperature, mm -hmm. it's already gelling. Oh yeah. So it's forming like a skin already. And that's, that's just because of the extra temperature in my skin. Wow. And often it goes, it goes up on the edge here, but it, it's, it's a wee way off here. But I reckon about No minutes. licking the ball in this baking and it'll, exercise. And it'll turn into a solid, a solid, not solid, but it'll form one lump that'll take an impression once it's gelled. Right. Um, when we're patching, like we were talking like earlier, we use it at this stage. So like you can and that's when you can sculpt into it. Yeah, because you can you can quite easily sort of grab grab the foam and you can you know you can make something quite smooth like that and and you'll you'll sort of work it and then you let it gel and then it's now which we'll see and then yeah. you can actually go in and texture it, sculpt it, clean it up and then so on and so forth. And we've made whole like that suit is a lot of that construction is done like this. Is this also one of the ways you can cover a seam as yep. well? It's yeah, that's exactly how they would do it, yeah. A lot, a lot of jobs we've done in the past, especially more sort of low budget TV jobs, you'll, we'll make whole suits like this. You make whole suits yep. as additive construction? Yep, just like her, back in the days of the Hercules and Xena TV shows, which they shot here in the late 90s or mid to late 90s, we would just construct it out of sheet foam. So you'd yep. buy sheet foam, we'd carve it all out of sheet foam and then we'd smear it in foam latex, go and texture it all. All right, well, we'll see you in the morning Excellent. when we get this out of the mold. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, sir. Brilliant. That was a, quite a full day. We, we got day. a lot done in a very reasonably short period of time. Uh, coming in today, we had this whole list of things that we knew had to be done, mm -hmm. and uh, it was awesome. The, the, the life cast in the beginning. We did. So that was the first thing, was Jason and Kim uh, cast up my arm, and. It was great. There's been a lot of progress in the life casting material science since I was doing that. I was using alginate and plaster bandages. They have these wonderful silicones and thick silicones and a, and a process that makes it much faster. So they end up with a complete usable mold of my arm rather than an interim casting that then needs to be molded. And these are people that are doing this at large scale. Every single day on giant films. Yeah, Jason and Kim are amazing. And they're a couple, so they mm -hmm. have this wonderful dance with each other that's super intuitive and lovely to watch as they compliment and do their thing. I was delightful to see. And then they brought you also into the foam, uh, foam latex lab, which is a lab that we haven't really explored. Before. No, and I didn't bring this up, but um, foam latex is uh, very volatile stuff. And some people, when they touch it, can actually make it yellow. And it's just because of the content of whatever their sweat is. And I'm one of these people. We're said to have what they call his hands because we're not allowed to touch foam latex because if we do it turns it yellow. Will tint it. Yep. Yeah. And it's the, really the most complicated casting material there is. It's five to seven to nine parts. All the ratios have to be adjusted dependent upon the temperature, upon the humidity. I mean, they're scientists. It is the baking of casting. Right. But the benefits are that you get this material that's resist resilient. It's mm -hmm. lightweight. Yeah. And so for a creature performer, getting to 
Look at that suit up in person. That thing is so light. And they can adjust the density of each part as they need it. They can make the skin thicker. They can make the horns harder or lighter. They can make facial appliances super droopy. They, they have tremendous amounts of control over it. It's really like, it's lovely to be there on the ground. It's been 20 years since I've run any, uh, any foam latex. What did you think about that creature design? And, and Look, that creature is beautiful. And, uh, you know, to iterate again, that's not a creature that someone sculpted and cast. That is basically additive construction with parts and pieces that Weta has been building a library of for t three decades now. And it's because they only need to do the one-off. They're mm -hmm. not going to make a giant mold for that yeah. bodysuit. And for the purposes of the film, it's perfect. It's, it's perfect. absolutely stunning. So, Mike, I'm going to be really curious later in the week when we meet Shane, yeah. how him as a performer who's worn the suit for right. hours at a time, what his idea is going to be for the action sequence. Indeed. Um, we also had a great production meeting where we refined the script to fit what we're doing, I think, a lot tighter yep. and a lot funnier. Um, and we did a, a, a bit of pre-prep with Peter Lyon that we'll talk about tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Of course, you're going to be building a hero prop with yep. Peter Lyon. Of course. So you of guys course. will have to check that out <laughs> the next day. Yes, we will see you guys tomorrow.